Hey guys, welcome to the workshop. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made the LED light panel you see behind me. This is perfect for anyone who shoots videos or just needs some extra lighting in their shop or workspace. So if you're interested to see how to build it, stay tuned. There's a detailed list on my website for the materials you need for this project. Start out by cutting the front and back panels to whatever size you would like the light to be. In my case, they are 24 inches wide and 8 inches long. Rip a pine 1x4 into 1 inch wide strips. Then cut them to length to form a frame the exact same size of your panels you've already cut. I used wood glue and screws to assemble the frame. To stick the back panel onto the frame, I used a little bit of glue and then staples to hold it in place while the glue set. I then took all the pieces into my home office slash makerspace that I've been building in my workshop. If you're interested to see how this space has been developed, click the link in the description below to go to my homestead channel, which is where I've been covering the step-by-step -step of this build and conversion process. Unpacking my LED light kit, I took a rough width measurement and cut the strips to fit inside the frame. With all of the LED strips cut to length, I went ahead and stuck them down using the backer tape that comes with them. I tried to alternate left, right, left, right, as well as flip the strips upside down from one another to keep the positive and negative sides of the wires facing each other. With the LED strips glued down, I went ahead and began pre-tinning some scrap wire that I had. This scrap wire comes from a trailer wiring kit that you usually get whenever you buy lights for a utility trailer. If you're like me, as soon as you get a utility trailer, the first thing you do is smash the tail lights out. Having a couple of kits on hand and the wiring makes it nice for these kind of projects. After cutting and stripping and pre-tinning the wires, I then was able to begin soldering them to the light strips. If you don't have the same kind of wire on hand already, some thin gauge wire will be fine. This is only a 12 volt system. This took a while to complete and was very tedious. Take your time and take breaks as needed to get this part done. Also be very careful to make sure you connect negative to negative and positive to positive. With everything soldered together, I then tested the light strip to make sure it worked. Thankfully, it did. The last step was to put some hot glue around everything to pin it down and get the wires in a more organized fashion. After that, it was time to screw the panel to the front and give it one last test. Next up, I took the light panel into my workshop and that's where we'll pick up now. So I'm going to put a threaded insert in the bottom of this light panel so that I can attach this to some tripod mounts. Here's a little look at what that threaded insert looks like. I'll put a link to where you can buy these online in the description below. So a little trick on how I found the best way and the most reliable way to get these in is to take a bolt that's the same thread. In this case, this is a quarter by 20. Stack some nuts on there so it only goes so far. You want it to bottom out. And basically you thread it together like that. And what that does is it then gives you a much stronger, better way of threading this into the wood. These come with little slots with, I guess, the assumption you would use a screwdriver to put these in. It's horrible. You can't line them up, they keep falling out, and eventually you'll strip the brass before you ever get the insert put in. So this little trick here is something I've used a lot and it's super helpful. I marked the center point of my light panel here and I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole. This is a 3 8 inch drill bit. One of the reasons I made this wood thicker than you probably would think you would want it is so that I could drill the hole and put this insert in here without popping all the way through the wood and filling the inside clean area with wood shavings. If you choose to use a thinner wood and pop through in the drill and it's all that, it's not the end of the world. It's just, I guess it's more of my OCD on something. All right, I usually we'll start it by hand and then I'll finish this with a wrench. Let me go grab that wrench real quick. One of these multi eight in one whatever wrenches, I call this one the bone wrench because it kind of looks like a bone. One of these in a shop is super handy. 
Um, it's got metric and standard sizes. They're probably a little fudged here and there, but it's really good for generic uses for a quick grab to know you'll have the right tool in your hand to do something simple like this. I'll put a link to this tool in the description below too. So at this point, it's just a matter of slowly threading it into place, putting your hand on it to make sure it stays upright and plumb as best as you can. And uh, pretty much it. Once you get it put into place and threaded down there as far as you want to, it's as easy as backing this bolt out. And then it comes out leaving your thread right there in place where you want it. Now I have the ability to hang this off of my ceiling track system for lighting or camera use, as well as stick it on a tripod or other versatility options. Now, if you're not a person to make videos and you don't have a tripod, you could easily make a base for this out of just some scrap pieces of wood and it just stand upright or do whatever. You definitely have the flexibility and the freedom to do whatever you want and whatever works best for your situation with this light design. Here you go. So in my shop I have a T-track that runs in several areas of my workshop that I then hang this monopod and a carriage from. This allows me to move the camera around or my light panels around as I need to to make videos. All right, let's light it up. There you go, guys. Pretty simple build. You don't need a lot of tools and as long as you can solder some wires or figure it out as you go, you'll be set. Again, there'll be links to all of these kit pieces and tools I used in the description below, and there'll be a more detailed write-up over on my website, thegreenacreworkshop.com. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up and share this on social media if you'd like to. It really does help out the channel and helps me continue to create content for you guys. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time in the workshop.